My name is Jack Middleton. I live in Middle England in the mid latitudes. I'm middle-aged, earning a middling salary, writing travel books and teaching geography at Oxford University. My life is extremely comfortable, or at least it was. Till one mild summer's day when I was thinking about the English obsession with weather. I had an idea for a book. We complain ceaselessly about our temperate climate. But what must it be like to live with real extremes? What was life like in the hottest, coldest, wettest and driest inhabited places on earth? I put this question to my publisher and to my horror, she said go and find out. These are monsoon clouds, and they produce rain that would make a wet weekend in Bognor seem like fun. The UK is renowned for being pretty wet, but in some places beneath these clouds in northeast India, what we get in a year, they get in a single day. I wanted to see what it was like to live in a place where it can rain continuously for 11 days on end. So I was heading for the Kazi Hills, the wettest place on earth. But I was starting my journey 500 kilometers to the southwest, in Calcutta. I'd come here to see real rain in a big city, but although the southern state of Kerala was being lashed by storms and the northern city of Agra was entirely waterlogged here, the rains were late. It felt pretty wet to me, but if the monsoon had arrived, it's likely I'd have been up to my knees in water. So this is pretty pathetic rain. Where's, yes. where's the serious monsoon but, but, stuff? Don't worry, you'll get it. We are not really in the season as yet. It is going to start soon. On the cusp. Absolutely. <laughs> My translator and guide, Runa Mar, picked me up from my hotel and showed me the sights. When it pours, the streets are filled with water. I really? You know, the cars, the buses, they come to a standstill. I really? And you really cannot move. And uh, the, the traffic jams. And the best way to commute is but with rickshaws. So in the, in the monsoon season, these guys must clean up, and if they're the only people who can actually move around. Absolutely. It is the season when they earn their high, you know, the maximum amount of money. Amount. Yeah. Unlike back home, here, the rain is celebrated. It cools and cleanses the city, and for Indians, the monsoon is a time of plenty. Runa told me a good sign that the rains were on their way would be Hilsa in the coral fish market. It's chaos in here. It's incredible. Keep your eye on the way you're Hilsa is the monsoon fish. Like salmon, it lives at sea, but in the monsoon, it swims up the flooded rivers to spawn and get caught. Bruno wanted to find some for a monsoon party that night, but stocks were low. Those were hills, were No, no, no. Oh, they were? No, they were not. They look very similar. Well, fish, you know. <laughs> yeah, but they were right. They tend to. They tend to. These are hills, Bruna felt that finding Hilsa meant the rains must be coming, and she suggested I get prepared. She told me canvas and leather rot in the wet, so everyone here wears plastic shoes. The latest fashion seemed to be mock patent loafers. Shiny black, matte black. Well, it's a tricky decision, isn't it? Shiny or matte, yeah. <laughs> or luminous flip flops. Oh, yeah, beautiful. Really beautiful you colour. Oh, they're beautiful. <laughs> Next on the list was an umbrella, and Mahandra Dutt and grandsons had an astonishing range. Sweet, uh, oh, it's a sort of Spider-Man umbrella. Oh, wow. <laughs> actually, it goes right. with your soul. <laughs> yes, actually it does. <laughs> is it unlucky to open umbrellas inside? This is umbrella, so I can open it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I can't yeah. stop it. Yes. I can't stop it. <laughs> I will okay. show that one more thing. You know, you use the two person. It's ah. a big umbrella. Two person huh? umbrella. Ah. Ooh. Ah, yes. <laughs> 
That is too, isn't it? Yeah. Very really nice. Yes, this, this, this is for, for us. us. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's great, isn't it? <laughs> I'd settled on a pair of mock suede plastic sandals. And since the two man brolly wasn't huge, I felt a Macintosh was in order. I was ready for the deluge. Runa said that the monsoon, when it hits, brings life to a halt, and finding diversions for idle brains is a vital part of staying sane. But the Calcutta set likes to party with or without the rain. Hills are done two different ways. That's yes. very sexy, isn't it? Yeah, for the bones are big. That's why I give that part, you see. Mm -hmm. It's good, isn't mm -hmm. it? Hilsa has a very subtle taste. Yeah, it's beautiful. I was here to pick the brains of these monsoon veterans, and not everything I heard was reassuring. Any particular advice that you think I should have for my trip? Because, as you know, I'm not experienced in monsoon. You want an honest one? Of course. Go back to England. <laughs> Tomorrow. I'll arrange for the flights. You might have reptiles and snakes who can possibly attack you. Eh? And we're talking poisonous snakes. You'd never know. No, How not. would you know? Are you yeah, poisonous yeah. or not? Yes. You can't ask the snake. I'd imagine drowning, but death by snake bite was an unwelcome surprise. But it wasn't all hell. It just is lovely during the monsoon. It's all of us, you won't be able to find an Indian who doesn't love the monsoon. Really? I love the dark clouds. I love the days when you can lie in bed and look at the clouds and say, I don't have to get out of bed like today. Today was a day and I forgot how to play. We have a hangover, that's Oh, right. shut up. <laughs> it does things to me that the rest of the year doesn't. Mm. And I'm sure it does it to you English people also. Well, I intend to find out. I wasn't quite sure what she meant, but it appeared that the monsoon did more to people than just get them wet. It also sounded rather dangerous. My plan was to follow the path of the monsoon northeastwards to the Kazi Hills crossing Bangladesh and picking up some tips on how you survive in a country more known for its water than its land. The monsoon is more than just rain. It's woven into the fabric of life on the Indian subcontinent, where it's been driving trade and agriculture for centuries. Are these solid gold, sir? It's said that a bad monsoon can bring down a government. Huge pomegranates. He buys them from Calcutta and brings them. OK. Can we have one of each? One of those and one of those. I was four days into my trip, and there was still no sign of rain. What's meant to happen is that the gradual increase in land temperatures throughout the summer eventually triggers the deluge. The land warms up in contrast to the sea, and the air above it rises, pulling in air from the Indian Ocean. This air has picked up moisture from the ocean, which it deposits on the land. It's been estimated that during a typical monsoon day, these clouds carry 75,000 million tonnes of water vapour across the Indian subcontinent. I crossed the border into Bangladesh and saw clouds, but no rain. Runa took me to the village of Harialgoop, where they were planting a second crop of rice. The first was ruined because the rain didn't turn up when it should have done three weeks ago. There was a sense of urgency in the fields as everyone rushed to get their chores done before the rains hit. Then, late that afternoon, the skies darkened and my spirits lifted. It looked like the monsoon had finally arrived. The villagers downed tools and started to celebrate with a game of Hadoodoo. This is Hadoodoo. You know that this is the national game of Bangladesh and a game which is played everywhere in Bangladesh when it rains. This is the team. He has to go there, start saying Hadoodoo, holding his breath, touch somebody on that side and come back to his team. And if they catch him before and hold him till his breath runs out, that's it. He's out. He's out. He's out. Come, come, play. That's a pretty good game, yeah, can I? <laughs> as far as I could tell from Runa's hurried explanation, your turn lasts as long as you can keep saying ha do 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 using just one breath. <laughs> so they can catch him before he touches anyone. <laughs> when your team's being attacked, the idea is to grab them. <laughs> Shit, sorry guys. That was a bad one, wasn't it? That was me. <laughs> Now it was time to test my smoker's lungs. You didn't tell me. 
me about that rule, Runa. What's that all about? The attack to my left wasn't strictly legal, and so I got to fight again. And again. And again. I was having such fun that I hadn't even noticed that once more the rain had failed to appear, which meant we had to clean up in the village pond. So far I've had drizzle and showers, and they're just like a taster, they're the hors d'oeuvre before the serious monsoon rains begin. And as I move further north through Bangladesh, I expect the rains are going to uh, catch me up. And I'm ready for it. I just want it to come. The next day, we boarded a splendid 1920s paddle steamer called the Masud. The only reason this lumbering rust bucket is still plying her trade on the rivers of Bangladesh is down to the skill and experience of her captain. Runa and I went to talk weather with Noor Muhammad Mia. I'm, I'm here to see some serious rain. Do, do, you, do you have a forecast as to when, when it'll really begin? Eight or ten more days. Though the weather is all right, there is a number one signal on, which is that there's a depression building in the bay. Ah, OK. So oh, that's good news. Yeah. Well, it's good news for me. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Bangladesh sits on the world's largest delta, made up of nearly 200 rivers. And it must have been raining somewhere because either side of the channel we were on, the countryside was beginning to flood. As the water level rose, people and animals were being forced to share an ever-decreasing area of dry land. These were the exact conditions I'd been warned about in Calcutta. It was probably Snake City out there. Runo wanted me to confront my fears and took me to a village isolated by the floodwaters where some river gypsies known as Baddy had set up a snake charming show. They attract a crowd and then sell jewellery and herbal medicines to the villagers. Just as I was starting to relax and enjoy the show, a man appeared asking the Baddy if they could remove a cobra from his home on the other side of the island. Against all my better judgement, I suddenly found myself on a snake hunt. I, what are the chances of it being poisonous? Ah, he says that there are 90% chance that the snakes are going to be poisonous. I'm not really a snake person. Nick, you're supposed to help them. Well, I'll observe. Well, maybe I'll give some advice. But be careful! <laughs> he says there's nothing to fear. Nothing to fear except a poisonous snake! This was dangerous work. There can be a five-fold increase in snake bites during the monsoon period. I kept my eyes peeled while the baddies smelled the earth. A fishy aroma means the snake has passed by. He doesn't think it's there. No, he doesn't think it's there. Which way? This is he's inside. One of the rooms. You can try. I'd look in this wood palm myself. <laughs> look at that. Perhaps. There's got to be a dozen snakes in there at least. He's got it, he's got it, he's got it. Suddenly this man's bedroom felt very small. Hey, look, I don't actually want to be in this room if there are any more. Aye, 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 there are two. And it felt a lot smaller when they found the mate. And to my horror, instead of killing them, the baddies started showing off. Yeah, well, just get rid of them, guys. What do you do now? What, what are they supposed to be doing now? <laughs> oh, Lord! <laughs> If I was bitten by the, one of these, how long before I die? Oh, that's pleasant. 20 minutes and you're dead. That's what he said. 20 minutes was no time. 
but the baddie reckoned they knew what to do. As soon as they're bitten, they tie the limb, and then they cut themselves, yeah. press out the blood, yeah. and take um, either iron or cigarette butts or something and burn the area. Right. Cauterize it. I was glad to see the cobras finally packed away, and to be frank, I didn't feel any better about snakes at all. The next day I switched to four-wheel drive for the last leg of my journey through Bangladesh up to the Indian border. And, predictably enough, no rain. So far my Calcutta Mac had been a total waste of money. It's not really monsoon. It's, I've seen more rain in, in Oxford, where I live. <laughs> <laughs> there are areas here which would be underwater from June, and these areas are practically dry now. I'm not sure about dry, Rina. I mean, they're still pretty wet. <laughs> I'd heard reports that the monsoon was hitting everywhere else. It just kept missing me. Two days after I'd left Calcutta, the city had been inundated. Facing the imminent prospect of a dry time in the wettest place on Earth, I arrived at the border. Runa, thank you very much for everything. I'm sorry about the rains, but you know how it is. Yeah, Could Bangladesh. do nothing about it. She and... tried. <laughs> tried her hardest, didn't quite deliver. Oh, oh, thank no. you very much, <laughs> Pepper. He'll cross the border sorry. and he'll get rain, not yeah. to worry. No, all the best wishes. <laughs> bye bye, Nick. Bye. bye, Nick. With my fingers firmly crossed, I went back into India. By this stage on my journey to the wettest place on Earth, I was meant to have been soaked for a week, but it hadn't happened. My next rendezvous was with the rangers at the Kaziranga National Park. On their three-month tours of duty, these rangers spend weeks out in the open, and I wanted to find out how they handle life actually in the rain. All set, we're all here. I was going back to nature to experience the monsoon in the raw. But as we headed into the heart of the park, the monsoon had done yet another disappearing act. The sun was shining and even the drizzle was gone. As soon as we arrived at the camp, Negru prepared my feet for wading. The paste, made from ground henna leaves, toughens the skin. 20, 30 days. This stuff would stop my feet and toenails from rotting in the fetid swamp. The rangers spend most of their time patrolling, on the lookout for poachers and injured animals. It was obviously an unpleasant and dangerous existence, but all I could think about was the lack of rain. Have you had much rain in the park this year? You're saying that you know there's been less rain this year, so if there's more rain we've had to swim across. Oh, right. So we're lucky. <laughs> it's a minor flood. <laughs> I put a brave face on it, but without the rain, the exercise seemed pointless and loathsome, even before the leeches got me. I've lost my shoe. How about actually getting it off rather than just watching it? Can we move it? Get rid of it. Oh, oh no, look! Got three on me. The rangers just ripped the leeches off. It's the quick method, but risky. Get off. The jaw can break off in your skin and cause infection. Burning them off with a cigarette is a better technique, but funnily enough, my matches were soaking. My shoes. <laughs> the rangers are more concerned with poachers than leeches. This park is home to over a thousand Indian rhinoceroses, whose horns can have a street value of thirty-five thousand dollars. With stakes that high. The rangers shoot first and ask questions later. Luckily, this was just a rhino. But it wasn't very reassuring to hear that if it had charged, the only thing the rangers would have done is to shoot in the air to scare it away. They're not permitted to shoot directly with the rangers. No, 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 no. Back at the camp, our close encounter with the rhino got the rangers talking about previous near misses. 
None of them came nearer than where, Negru, where, where were you whose arm, ever since a rhino bit it, was held together by steel oh, wow. plates. There's an irony in the fact that you are risking your life to save the rhinos, but sometimes the rhinos turn around and nearly kill you. Uh -huh. yeah. yes. 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 It's rather an unpleasant climate, I have to say, hot and sweaty. My clothes are always damp. Even if I haven't been wading, I just sweat buckets. During the day, you've got to be thinking about those big, fat, slimy leeches all the time. And as soon as you relax and the sun goes down, out come the mosquitoes. And there's no rain again. That night, the rangers told me the park was suffering its worst drought in 15 years. I was beginning to think I'd never need my Calcutta Mac. But there's been less rain, so the water is stagnant, and so there have been more leeches. More leeches yes. with that. Oh, God. I've really have, have timed it right, haven't I? Mm. <laughs> I missed the rain, and there are more leeches because of it. Great. I'd hit rock bottom and decided to leave Kazaranga ahead of schedule and get onto the Kazi Hills, where surely my luck would change. Oh, yeah. <laughs> The Kazi Hills get so much rain because not only are they the first obstacle that the monsoon air hits after the plains of Bangladesh, but also they lie at an almost perfect right angle to the flow of that air. This sodden air mass rises over the hills, cools and unloads staggering amounts of rain on Morsenram and Cherrapunji, which for years had vied for the title of wettest town on earth. At least, that's what's supposed to happen. Waiting, waiting, waiting. But we here it is. We haven't had a very good monsoon. You haven't either. We're supposed to. My translator for this leg of the journey was a straight-talking Kazi woman named Dulcy Walang. We were heading for Morsenram, the current wettest town on Earth, and as we climbed, things at last began to look good. Gigantic waterfalls meant that there must be some kind of precipitation up above, and then we hit fog. Visibility is about 10 metres, isn't it? Do you think we'll actually make it to Morton Ram? <laughs> Up here, the monsoon brought different, new hazards. We passed two trucks that had run each other off the road in the thick fog. You've been waiting for the rain for so long. Oh, too long. <laughs> I nearly went balmy in Bangladesh. After another 20 kilometres, Dulcy suddenly decided we should stop and admire the view. So there you are, Nick, your first view of Mosin Ram. Oh, yeah. Wow. It's a really spectacular place. <laughs> I can't see anything. It's a cloud. That's the whole point, remember? It's the wettest place on Earth. On a clear day, you'll be seeing, from this distance, you'll see a couple of churches. And I'll believe you, Dulcie. I'll believe you. Thousands wouldn't, but I'll believe you. For a brief moment, the fog broke up and I glimpsed a church and some houses clinging to a hillside. Then the town melted away again. It was the only view I ever got of the wettest place on earth. Morsenram is inhabited by one of the many distinct hill tribes that populate the northeast of India. The Khazis are thought to have migrated here from Cambodia or Thailand centuries ago. And here they've lived undisturbed until the arrival of Scottish and Welsh missionaries in the early 1800s, who converted most of them to Christianity. Up here, umbrellas will do, but I set my sights on a canoe. Tell you what, what do you want to buy from us? I need one of these. I need one of these. She says it's 25 rupees. What will you do with it, Nick? It's to keep me dry with, of course. <laughs> That's, can I try a big one? Doesn't it? That's very effective. What do you reckon, Dulcie? I think if you remove the raincoat and wear one of those shawls that the locals are wearing, maybe then, then you know. I might, you might have just something. Blend with the yeah. Crowd. So it's curiously echoey in here as well. Okay. <laughs> yeah. In spite of Dulcie's patent lack of enthusiasm, I wanted one of the tartan shawls too. They've been here ever since the missionaries. Uh, yeah. Now I'm not Good. superstitious. But barely 20 minutes after discarding my Calcutta Mac, it finally happened.
I'd waited a long time for this rain. Now it had come, it was every bit as satisfying as I'd hoped. Dulcie introduced me to a Kazi family who had agreed to put us up. But just as I thought I'd get out of the rain, Manolin's husband, Roy, suggested I join him on his rounds. Dulcie had arranged for us to stay with Mawson Rand's pork butcher. Is it because um, no one will come to your market stall, Roy, so you have to go to them during the monsoon? Generally, they do come, but it's seldom. And another point is they sell it at a lesser rate, that is, from the market. Well, in that case, I wouldn't bother going to the market at all. I'd just wait for him yes, to come to me. Yes, provided, of course, there is some leftover meat. You might just be uh... left with no meat. On days of heavy rain like this, farms and mines shut up shop, workers don't get paid, and everyone tightens their belts. With fewer people at the market, Roy has to hawk his leftover pork chops door to door. But after visiting two houses, he's had enough, and passing future pork chops on the way, it was time to go home and dry off. It's waterproof ink but the paper's starting to fall to bits. <laughs> Fires stave off the damp, and wood is kept dry beneath the floorboards. But, even though they burn all day, keeping everyone warm, dry and healthy is a struggle. Over the show off. <coughs> is it a problem keeping things fresh during the monsoon? <laughs> So they buy the meat and then they dry it there over the fire. That's oh. got smoking it. Would you like to try some of that? Yes, please. If, if that's Fresh meat only lasts a day in this humidity, but smoking it over the fire keeps it edible for a couple more. And I think I'm going to enjoy it here. And people are quite reserved until you smile at them and then they smile back. It's an extraordinary place. I've never been anywhere like it before because you do feel as if you're living in the clouds half the time until it starts raining, which is done a lot of. Great. The roofs of the houses in Mawson Ram were wired to the ground to stop them being torn loose in the high winds up here. And Roy's youngest son, Venison, had put together some ingenious bamboo plumbing to divert the rain inside. It was a simple, wet-season water supply. But amazingly, things in the dry season here are very different. It's hard to believe, but for eight months of the year, Mawson Ram suffers water shortages. The rains run off the hills and straight into Bangladesh. And the local water storage systems leave a lot to be desired. Between monsoons, Roy has to pay 10 rupees for a jerry can of drinking water. It seemed nonsensical, but after just 12 hours of this rain, everything here seemed a bit mad, especially having a tin roof. Even the electrics of my diary camera were being affected by the rain. The next morning there was no let-up. Other than a few people attending the 10.30 church service, the town was eerily deserted. The rain hadn't stopped all night, and it was still going strong. Relentless rain in extraordinary quantities. It's just a bit unnerving. Rather than sit under Roy's tin roof all day going deaf, I decided to take a wander. Eventually, I found someone to chat to. What's happening here? It's raining. <laughs> yeah, I can see it's raining. You can see it's raining, no? Yeah. What are you doing now? Right now, at this moment, I'll tell you, when it rains, I've got something. You've got something? Of course. I love this. What's that? It's called a cassie liquor. Cassie liquor. Ah. 
Once you come out of the house, you're wet. Yeah. Fully wet. Fully wet. So when you are fully wet, fully cold. Yes. When you are cold, so what do you have to do? Have some calcium. Uh, yes. Everyone was stuck indoors with nothing to do. So it wasn't surprising that when Roy announced he'd slaughtered a pig in my honour, plenty of people turned up. So how many people did this pig feed? Who did you go? About 60, 70. 60 or 70 people? Yes. Extraordinary. I saw it. It was only about this big. <laughs> magic. You're a magic man, Roy. It hasn't stopped raining all day, has it? Nick, you find this amazing. Yeah, yeah. You haven't amazing. seen hailstones the size of ping pong balls. The rain is just inconvenient, but that's not seen causing the dangerous. <laughs> so, is there anything actually good about the monsoon? Rain stop when the rain stops. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. For one evening, at least the lethargy of the monsoon was dispelled. But later that night, it was business as usual. Cars is, uh, deaf people with very strong bladders, I suppose. Just... I've been through the, virtually the entire gamut of emotions about the rain in Mawson I mean, when I first arrived with relief, then I was like awe inspired by the sheer volume. And I'm sort of a bit worried. They're meant to be stuck. What, what is this? It's biblical. And it's like this, non stop, for three days. <laughs> it might seem churlish since I'd come here for the rain. More rain! But I was beginning to get a little bit bored with it. I needed some distraction and I had the perfect project. Just 22 kilometres east of here lies Cherrapunji, ex wettest town in the world. They lost the title to Mawson Ram six years ago, but apparently felt they'd been robbed. I'd spent the last three days getting soaked in Mawson Ram, the wettest town in the world. Now I was heading to Cherrapunji, its neighbour and rival in the rain stakes, to conduct a little investigation. On the way, we passed a lush green valley briefly lit by the sun. It was the first time I'd seen it since Kazaranga. But once we got to Cherrapunji, we were back in the clouds. Only here, there was just a light drizzle. It was at Cherrapunji that the British East India Company established their principal outpost in North East India in the 1850s. At first, the British liked it. The landscape reminded them of Scotland. But the rain soon got to them. It said that some went mad, and a few even committed suicide. But the old British graveyard was an eerie place, and I couldn't help but imagine what it must have been like to be stationed here for years on end in 1850. However, the spirits of these soldiers of the Raj couldn't tell me what I really wanted to know. When was this rain going to end? Dulcie, however, knew someone who might. Nick. He wants to know how you are. I'm very well, thank you very much. How are you? I'd like to ask whether I'm going to see the sun within the next week. Dali Kung Jo is Cherrapunji's shaman. His egg is his crystal ball. He consults the Kazi gods on all things, and the weather is, not surprisingly, a favourite topic. Mm-hmm. 
Kau nak suka kerja dia? It's still gonna rain, Nick. <laughs> Instant. It's still gonna rain. Good point. Thank you very much. Oh, I copy. Yeah. Oh, because it is covered. It, it didn't. Oh, uh, right, 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 right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. that's pretty clear cut, then, isn't it? We'd arranged to stay the night in Darley's house, and once I'd put my soaking clothes to dry and got into some merely damp ones, we settled down to an evening of betel nut chewing. Oh, really? Sort of numbed my mouth. Excuse mm. me, I'd better have another one. <laughs> the young man said it was a natural stimulant for internal warmth. For me, it was just a blessed relief to be away from Roy's tin roof. This place is a complete contrast to Roy's pad in Mawson Ram. The roof is really interesting. It's, it's thatch, but made of grass. And it's perfectly soundproofed. You cannot hear the rain at all. I had to go out to the door every now and again just to make sure it is still raining. It was, but thanks to the thatch, I got my first decent night's sleep in a week. The Met station here was set up by the British in 1852 and it's been breaking rainfall records ever since. In 1861, they recorded 26 metres, the most ever in a year. And on the 16th of June, 1995, they got a metre and a half in a day, more than Oxford gets in two years. Mr M.P. Leutel and his assistant take manual readings every three hours, with an automatic system providing continuous data. Mr. Leutel is an outsider from Assam on a one-year posting. What's it like on an everyday basis to actually live here when it's raining this hard? For me, it is very difficult here to spend my days. You cannot go out because it is all over raining and the wind is there. So you have to be in this house. And in this, uh, this type of wet weather, once, as, as I am feeling, Mm -hmm. They frequently feel going for bathroom. Going to the bathroom all the time. Yeah, I felt that too, yes. <laughs> so it is very difficult to live. Yes. Interesting to experience, Cherapunji. Yes, yes, yes. For yes, a yes. short time only. Yes, yes, yes. It is uh, interesting to experience to be here. Yeah. As a met man. Yes, as a met man. To measure the record rainfall. Of right. course. But are you lo looking forward to leaving it? Yes, yes, yes. I am very much eager to leave this uh, place, actually. Were they, um, I could sympathise with Mr. Leutel. After just three months here, he'd had enough. Yes, yes. yes. They, but what they, about they that rivalry bad. with Mawson so Ram? It is their property. The so annual the average world record is no longer with Cherapunji, I understand. It's now with Mawson Ram. It is still in disputed. Disputed? Yeah, it ah. is uh, maintained by some part-time observer. Uh -huh. So the authenticity of his maintenance is uh, a bit disputed. So not quite as reliable as the records here in Cherapunji? Just he observes. Yes. If the instrument is out of order, mm -hmm. it will take a long time to repair it. So it is uh, the man who works there. Mm -hmm. So that is the problem. Mr. Leutel seemed to be saying it was impossible to tell which town was wetter while an amateur was measuring rainfall in Mawsonram. It looked like I'd have to go back to meet this part-timer for myself. But first, I had to play a game of darts. Needless to say, the Kazi version of the game was different. It has a strange psychological twist that took the whole contest to another level. The teams are divided into thinkers and throwers. My team's thinker wore a jaunty blue cap. The thinkers argue about the rules of each match. And here's the weird bit. Whichever team wins the argument becomes predestined to win the throwing of the darts. The thinker on my team and the thinker on their team made the agreement, right? Yes. And how did that go? Because I didn't really follow it. Who's sort of ahead psychologically so far? Uh, that man with white hair. The opposition your, thinker. The opposition thinker. He made your man obey. Will uh, will uh, play with uh, 50 rupees above. He said yes. Right. Two men on a both sides. He said yes. So in other words, there's no point in me throwing because I'm going to lose. You do. We'll see though. We'll I, see. I, I Maybe I best. won't lose. I wish you all the best. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. It's got a huge one. If I was destined to lose, it seemed I was onto a sure bet. And I'd like to back them to win. Is that possible? 
It's not impossible. It's, no, it's not possible. You can only bet on yourself to win. <laughs> OK. It was all extremely confusing. But I did think it was a bit rich when my thinker, who had apparently just lost me the game, blessed my darts and wished me all the best. OK, so he, he has blessed him. He's wished you the best, him. best okay, we'll that you will hit the target. Good. I'll do my best. Good luck. By the time we started to throw, the fog was so thick I could scarcely see the target. My team immediately went one down, and apparently our only chance of victory was for our thinker to find fault with the opposition. In one game I saw the man who was uh, throwing that, his loincloth dropped off. Oh. And that man from the opposition, he said, this is not we, what we have agreed upon. We haven't agreed that you should remove your loincloth. <laughs> I got the hands that this man was going to lose, and he did, he lost. The knowledge that we'd already lost kept nagging at the back of my mind and really put me off my game. That was pretty bad, wasn't it? You can do better than that. Dossie, I need some more positive vibes from you. I'm just getting negative energy from you. The opposition hit twice, and the game was beyond us. Then, a miracle. I didn't care that we'd lost. I'd arrived in the Kazi zone. I could even accept that it was our thinker's submission rather than my ineptitude that had caused our defeat in the throwing of the darts. I'm off to Moorsenram tomorrow. And I didn't really think I'd be going back there, but having spoken to the uh, chief meteorologist here in Cherrapunji, he's, he's thrown aspersions on Morton Ram, really, by saying it's a part-time meteorologist, and if things go wrong, well, they may just fudge it. And I'd like to see for myself just uh, how big a fudge element there may be. Back in Morton Ram, nothing had changed. According to Roy, the rain hadn't let up once during my three days in Cherrapunji. Dulcie and I went to the public works department, who looked after the Met station. I was told the Met man was on holiday. In his absence, the readings were being taken by the department's assistant chef. That didn't sound too promising, so I decided to set up my own experiment. I was going to spot check one of Mawson Ram's 24-hour readings. A short walk from the Public Works Department, I set up my own state-of-the-art electronic rain gauge, a tipping device, ideal for these very wet conditions. I set my machine to zero at precisely 8.30 a.m. Zero. Good. Now I just had to wait for the rain to do its thing. And it did, of course. It's still raining. The most extraordinary amount. There was really mental the amount of water that's coming down this place. Um, apparently this stuff goes on for like two weeks, three weeks, just like this. No, it's ridiculous. Where did you um, have your training as to how to take the readings? He don't training me yet. He let him know. Go ahead to training. Ah, the main man taught him and he still learnt it on the job. Ah, oh, learnt it on the job, yeah, that's the best way, I think, isn't it? At 8.30 the next morning, like Dulcie and I here. joined the assistant yeah, chef as he on. took Morton Ram's daily reading. Oh, it's a lot, isn't it? So 20, 40 millimetres, it's uh, accurate after a fashion, I reckon some of it's going over the side, which isn't so good, I've lost count, no it's still going, you can tell he's the cook because he's very good at putting it back and forth, is he? <laughs> Dilsey didn't seem to be sharing my enthusiasm. So I lost count, how many millimetres was that? 287. 287. Absolutely staggering. 
160. I couldn't wait to see what my machine had recorded. So mine's saying 308 millimetres, and it's taken us a good 10 minutes to get over here. Um, but my machine's saying, if anything, it's even wetter here in Mawson now. <laughs> Do you know that where I come from, in Oxford, in England, that is nearly half the amount of water we get in an entire year. And you've got it in one day. The assistant chef one didn't year, seem all that interested, but I was delighted. <laughs> it's a very wet place. <laughs> My experiment wasn't very scientific, and this chef certainly won't win prizes for measuring rainfall. But to me, Mawson Ram just felt ten times wetter than Cherrapunji. I've never seen rain like this. It's like a Megalion inverse version of the Chinese water torture, if you like. You either lose it and go mad, or you have to just mellow out and sit here. But it's fine. Doing nothing is fine during the monsoon. It's very nice, actually. Mawson Ram really came up trumps in the end, and I'm afraid to admit it had taken its toll on me.